Uh, so um, your second example uh, I, I, you, you described as follows. Uh, cyber criminals can hide a small device known as a Raspberry Pi inside a victim's mouse or keyboard in order to steal data, carry out a man-in-the-middle attack, and more. Uh, again, could you first walk me through the actual process of how this works uh, from installation to theft of data? Yeah, so this is actually one of the one of the coolest uh, the coolest methods. Yeah. So um, as you as you know, um, air gapping network is uh, what is considered to be best practices with regards to critical infrastructure or right. or networks in general. If you're located in a in a let's say in a classified environment, then you have your classified network, and uh, yep. and you may have in a in a room next to you or in the corridor in somewhere somewhere else, you may have a a kind of a separate network which will allow your engineers to uh, you know browse for uh, the internet for uh, information, look up mm -hmm. things because you still need that connection, and there's full galvanic separation between these yeah. two networks. So okay, there's nothing physically connecting uh, these two networks there's literally no way you can connect those yeah. two yeah right right so the so one of the one of the examples is actually breaching the network over the usb peripheral side so that means mm -hmm. that the attacker can take a mouse and implant it with a let's say raspberry pi w device which is mm -hmm. a kind of a 5 us dollar device yep this device will identify itself as a legitimate uh, mouse and keyboard. So that means that even if the victim has followed best practices and uh, uh, put this specific make and vendor of uh, and part number of this mouse into his uh, allow list, nothing will uh, will sound the alarm because this device will present itself as a legitimate device. Mm -hmm. After doing that, the device will run a a very naive uh, looking payload. That means that it will not be using any PowerShell commands. It yep. will not be using any um, privileged uh, access or things like that. Right. It will run a naive code that will allow it to extract information from that air gapped environment. Hmm. Now, the way the way the the common way of doing that is actually using the caps lock and the nam lock indication on the on the keyboard okay. as the, your way of exultation. Because uh, I don't know if you if you know, but uh, the actual LEDs on a, on a keyboard, the Namlock, Caps Lock, and Scroll Lock that are actually lit on the keyboard, yes. they are lit following an, an instruction from the PC side. So oh. you press on the Caps Lock, but the the one who actually tells that LED to light on uh, is the PC. So okay. you actually have kind of three bits to play with and exfiltrate information from the PC. Wow. And using a kind of a two-bit on-off king information, you can actually exfiltrate information from that secured air gap PC or uh, or HMI controller mm -hmm. uh, to back to that uh, Raspberry Pi where, where it will be stored. And again, it will be stored without identifying itself as a mass storage device, which will obviously will cause right. it to flag the, to be flagged, but as a as a totally innocent HID device. Now, wow. once the information is stored in that Raspberry Pi, you can use the Raspberry Pi Zero W capabilities of creating a wireless mesh network. So, assume that you can have one mouse in, delivered through the supply chain or through the internal abuser or any other type of uh, uh, similar method to the secure network, and then one placed in a different uh, network that has external connectivity, mm -hmm. then these two mouse could actually talk to each other and mm. from air gap over that, uh, the, yep. that network and pass information from that uh, secure network to the less secure network. And wow. because it's a mesh network, you can actually m deploy multiple devices and have a longer kind of propagation path until you get to a point where you get to the administrative network mm -hmm. or to uh, a, an endpoint that has external connection because it's a lady in HR or accounting or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then you're safe, uh, you're safe out. Um, and obviously you have the reverse path going in. So you can actually run commands as if you were a local user typing on his uh, local endpoint using his own verified keyboard. So this is one of the one of the coolest uh, coolest examples that we've seen. Yeah. Now, uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it sounds fairly flawless. So how does how do you even know to watch out for something like this other than like just keep your workstation secured or whatever? Like how are how are people coming in and 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 making these changes to to my, is it is it kind of similar to like because you hear with like red teaming like 
you know, you throw like, uh, you know, removable drives in the, in the driveway in the parking lot of the, of the building and someone picks one up and puts in their computer. Next thing you know, they're, they're breached. But, um, how are, how are these devices getting into keyboards and mouses, uh, in general? So, so first of all, I, I think that if you, uh, if you would run a, a survey, then, you know, most employees would, you know, in today's atmosphere will know better than to, uh, plug in a, a storage device or, yes. a, uh, you know, a, maybe a, a camera or a, or a cell phone. And, and most of the solutions actually allow the user to enforce such a such a policy. Yep. But again, as, as always, the attackers will look for the weak spot, and that would be the mouse and keyboard. Yep. And uh, assuming, uh, and, and even if I take the, 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 the more kind of uh, a simple way of, of using a wired keyboard or a, or a wired mouse, I think that if you uh, if you carry one in your bag and you'll try to get into places and uh, they will uh, ask you to uh, to show what's in your bag, mm -hmm. then in most cases they will be extremely intimidated by various wireless devices or or USB yeah. devices. They will make you leave them outside and things like that. Mm -hmm. But if you'll show them like a standard mouse, a wired mouse or a keyboard, then they'll say, okay, that's uh, that's fine. Right. If you'll show them a a charging cable for a for a certain device, then you know it will uh, it will be approved to, for use, and that's where the attackers will uh, uh, will will use those exact yeah. attack vehicles in order to uh, to get in. And so this is kind of like a, like an insider threat kind of thing. So you're getting people who are are coming in maybe as like a contractor or something like that, and they're and they're plugging into like a, a spare workstation, and 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 is that is that about right? Yeah, and and you should ask yourself, and any anyone listening to this um, this podcast should ask yourself: have, have I ever looked if there's something inside my my mouse or my keyboard? You know, it's mm -hmm. uh, you know you never look at that. No, I wouldn't uh, even think Because you, uh, yeah. yeah, you trust it. Uh, you know, you know, as as if you would trust a, you know like a, a simple RJ45 cable. Yeah. Um, and again, this is where the attackers will uh, will take advantage of this uh, lack yep. of awareness. I'm excited to announce that our InfoSec Skills platform will be releasing a new challenge every month with three hands-on labs to put your cyber skills to the test. Each month, you'll build new skills ranging from secure coding to penetration testing to advanced persistent threats and everything in between. Plus, we're giving away more than $1,000 worth of prizes each month. Go to infosecinstitute.com challenge and start your challenge right now.